What's up guys, John here from Type Medical Center, and today we're gonna to start documenting my journey. You're asking, what journey is that, John? The journey through my hernia surgery and the comeback, right? So I have an umbilical hernia right now that I need to get fixed. And if you don't know what umbilical hernia is, that's when your umbilical starts popping out. And you know, when you start like doing more exercises, it might pop out even more. Um, so I've already had a biungal hernia in like 2011 where I had mesh put on both sides and I've always built up my core, I've always been strong in that area, I always had abs. So I don't know what the problem is or what I did to even cause the umbilical hernia because I can't even like go to the point where I did it. And usually like when I did my biungal hernia, I know what I did. I was straining urinating. You can strain urinating, go number two, you can strain two as well, uh, coughing, uh, you know, puking, yelling, all these things will cause strain around those areas. And if they're weak in those areas, they will bust through. And that's kind of what happened to me. So at this point, like umbilical hernias, they don't have to be taken care of, it's only aesthetic purposes. But if it starts dealing with other issues in the body or you're having other negative symptoms, then you have to get it taken care of, which I'm in that boat. Mine starts getting worse and worse and worse, which I don't want to get any worse. And you can have really negative health things that happen to you, like testicular strangulation. strangulation. Um, you can have blockage of the intestines. Um, there's all different types of things that can happen. So get it taken care of or know what you're looking for. Um, now, there's some people that have lived with umbilical hernias their whole lives, right? It usually happens at birth with some of these, these guys or girls. So at that point, like they just live with it and they have no problems or no pain, nothing other happens and it doesn't get worse. Well, in my case, it's gotten worse. So, you know, my big question to him was gonna be, how long is the downtime gonna be, right? How long can I get back till I get in the gym? Cause man, six weeks is what he said. And the last one I did was 11 weeks. So I was kind of happy with the six weeks when he told me, but he's like, listen, you're gonna have to stay off of this and not do any strength ex exercising whatsoever or it's not gonna heal properly. Um, or we might have to be back in here or whatever it is. So I'm like, I don't want that. I follow the doctor's regiments or whoever the medical provider is and what they tell me to do so I can be compliant as a patient and make sure I get the result that we're looking to get. So follow me along in this journey, John's hernia surgery, number two, <laughs> umbilical and not the binding wheel. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy it and I hope we both learn something from it. So today is the day. Today is the day I'm gonna get my umbilical hernia fixed. So uh, I started getting some other negative symptoms from this hernia. So I decided that I was gonna take care of it because honestly, I wasn't gonna take care of it. It was just a little aesthetic issue, but uh, other health issues can arise from hernia. So make sure you guys are checking, make sure you guys are taking care of yourself because things can happen, guys and girls, right? So uh, today I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna get this hernia surgery done, umbilical. And uh, they say I'm gonna be down for about six weeks. So six weeks, I'm gonna have to watch my diet, which I already do because I eat the exact same thing every single day. So that's not gonna change. So I should be able to keep a little bit of my muscle mass. I mean, six weeks, they say after two or three weeks, you start getting atrophy. But hopefully I can do some little movements that'll keep my muscles a little active. I'm praying on that. If not, I've already been through a hernia surgery. I've had inguinal hernia surgery, biungual. So I had mesh put on both sides of me already. So this hopefully will be a walk in the park. I was 10 years younger last time I went through something like this and recovered and built back up. But I'm gonna show you guys the process of how to do this. If you are going through a surgery or something like an injury to keep you down and you want to get back to where you were before, it is possible, so don't think it isn't. I mean, not maybe not all surgeries, but you know, majority of them, you're gonna be able to bounce back. So at that point, I'm gonna show you guys what I go through here. If you guys have to go through this, you guys will have the experience. You guys will know what's coming for you. If not, you guys will get to see me go down, come back up, because you know what? The comeback is way better than the setback, so let's go. What's up guys, John here, and uh, I'm here to give you guys an update on my hernia repair surgery. 
Currently, I'm taking BPC-157, TB-500, IGF-1 therapy, my HRT, because so I want to heal as quick as possible, right? So I'm two and a half weeks in. I did my, my fault with the doctor, and he said everything's looking actually like it's healing quicker than usual, which hopefully it is. But as you can see, this is where they cut me for my umbilical hernia surgery. I still got a little bit of swelling around here, but I'm still lean. So he finally let me go back to 30 pounds. He said, anything over 30 pounds do not lift, but if I want to sit down and do some biceps, some triceps, then I can do that. Just no straining. You don't want me to do any you know, pushing exercises like bench press, now, obviously no legs or no abdominal uh, exercises. So I'll have to wait another two and a half weeks for that at least, because um, I've got to be at the six week mark, but I want to give you guys an update. So here's the update, and I'm going to give you guys more updates as the weeks go on. So stay tuned and you'll see me healing faster and better than ever, like a true Titan with Titan therapies. So watch the magic happen as those Titan therapies start healing me from the inside out. Later guys. All right guys, I promised you guys updates. Here's the update. So I'm four weeks into recovery right now. I'm gonna kind of show you. I don't have my, uh, I have to still wear these compression shirts. I hate wearing shirts underneath, but um, here it is. I mean, it's not too bad. You know, I actually kept the same weight, thank God, to my Titan therapies, because I haven't been able to train for four weeks. Um, doctor said I could lift like 30 pounds. So I've been doing like 30 pound dumbbells on one arm, maybe a little bit of presses here or there. So I haven't been able to really, to do anything as far as muscle building, like really get into it. I've just been trying to maintain at this point. I've got two more weeks left, and then he said I could go full blast. So I'll have a couple weeks before a couple big events that I need to do, so hopefully I can turn some things around. Um, you know, it's always, a, a, a mind game too, because once you're a certain size, if you can't train, especially if you love the training, you've been doing it for so many years, it can kind of get to you. And some people get depressed or get down about it, but you have to be mentally strong and say, listen, I understand what this is and I have to do this so I can get to this level, so I can get back into the mix and not have any regression, any more injuries or anything like that. So that's what I'm looking forward to. So I'm on all my different Titan therapies as far as IGF-1, my HRT, uh, and a couple other ones like BPC-157, TB-500 for healing properties. And uh, everything is going well. Uh, the doctor said that I'm healing faster than what a normal patient would. That's two thumbs up right there. Um, and I'm gonna do some blood work to see where my IGF-1 score is at because I know that will correlate if I'm recovering faster or not, which I think it's probably a little bit above board, which is a good thing. So uh, stay tuned. I'll bring back another one probably at six weeks, maybe at five weeks, and show you where I'm at there. But like I said, Still got the six pack, still rocking the six pack, and uh, you know, I got a little cut on my navel, but as far as everything else, man, I, I mean, I feel good. I feel good, I'm a little hairy, but that's okay. That's all right. So four weeks in, umbilical hernia surgery, A-OK, -okay, rocking and rolling. I'll see you guys soon for the next update. What's up guys, John here, and I'm back with another hernia repair update just for you guys. And uh, right now, I think I'm doing pretty good. I'm approaching six weeks. Still got visible abs, um, been eating pretty clean still, not getting off my regimen as far as HRT. So I'm taking that, and I've been taking a couple other things to help me heal faster. And actually the surgeon told me, he's like, man, you've been healing quicker than the normal patient. So what am I taking? So I'm taking BPC-157, TB-500, IGF-1 therapy, uh, GHKCU, so a copper therapy. Um, that should help with skin, elasticity. Um, so there's a number of different things I'm really taking and I want to make sure that I stay on my regimen, even the testosterone. Some people think that you got to work out to take testosterone. Well, I haven't worked out in six weeks and I've taken it and I haven't lost a bit. And you know what? Quality of life has not went down for me. So I'm there mentally, clarity's good, strength's still good, I think. But we're going to get back in the gym today and see what I can really do. Um, Friday is when I go see the surgeon again to get hopefully the final clearance to go back heavy and go back to going 110%. But I'm going to go at least 80% today and see how I feel. If I feel any pain, I'm going to stop immediately. But hey, listen, if I don't, I'm just going to keep working because I only got a couple more weeks to big Olympia that's coming. Um, and I got to look right for that. So come along with me and uh, let's see how it goes today and stay tuned. And we'll see what the surgeon says and uh, hopefully get back into this full blast. Titan lifestyle. Let's go.
It's been six weeks and I really picked up any weights. So I was really surprised by that. Um, didn't lose a lot of weight any, you know, during this time period. Obviously, if you go six weeks, you feel like, man, I've lost a ton of my gains. Um, but they pop right back up. So thank God. My Hercules potion, my therapies like that got me working and have kept me to where I'm at. And so when I got back in here, it wasn't like, oh my God, I got to do this, I got to do this. I'm running out of breath. No, good to go. Stamina, endurance, strength, everything was there. Thank you to my Hercules potion and my Titan therapies. And uh, thank God, I think I'm back. It's time to really get this going and time to get back on track with my physique. So I hope this motivates you because you know what? This is motivating me, so it better motivate you too as well. Hey, what's up guys? This is Big Drew over here back in the lab at Titan Medical. As you guys know, I got my blood work done a few weeks back. When I got my test back, the results said my glucose was kind of high. And I ate before I came in, so what I did was I waited a couple weeks later, and I'm back again, getting my blood work done again. This time I've been fasted. I haven't ate for about 12 to 16 hours, and I drank about a gallon and a half to two gallons today. So everything is perfect, ready to get this test done. This is Big Drew, and again, there's no limit to how many times you can get this test. So if you need to get it done every month, you can, twice a year, three times quarterly, as many times you feel comfortable with here at Titan Medical, and we service nationwide and do blood work in-house now. This is Big Drew, Titan Medical, all day, every day. Have a great day. What's up, guys? John here. I'm Sharice. And we are back with another Titan Medical movie review just for you. So this week we got to see, dum dum dum, Expendables 4. So we got to see the first three Expendables, which is pretty good. That's what's led us to this fourth one. Um, if you have never seen Expendables, it's basically uh, a whole bunch of different action, you know, heroes from over the years, old and new, put together by Sylvester Stallone, which is usually the main character in these movies. You know, it was pretty good. I thought there was a lot of action. Um, There's some, some good little comedy here or there. I thought one of the characters was trying too hard. It was like Antonio Banderas' son in the movie. That's not who that was. That's who that was. Oh, yeah, that makes so, sense now. Um, you know, I, I thought that was, uh, he, that character was. Uh, yeah, he was strange. You know, yeah, he was definitely strange. You know, he tried to take Antonio Banderas' like, vibe and it just didn't work out for him that way. So, yeah. Um, that was really good though. It, it had a good plot, good storyline. You know, some of the different things you see in the beginning, you're like, oh my God, I can't believe they did this. And then in the end, they kind of like tie it all together. I think the team could have been a little bit better. I think some of the characters could have been a little bit longer. <laughs> I know what John did. Right? So, yeah, so 3.8 is what I'm going to give it. It was definitely a good movie. It wasn't any, It wasn't like any down parts or anything like that. So I think you'll like that. Okay. Um, yeah. I like the movie because I like violence. So that always comes down to I love fast cars and I like violence. So anything that has either one of those, I do typically like it. Sylvester Stallone, I like him. And I also like Jason. Strategy. Yeah, they're both great actors. Um, 50 Cent was in there. You know, you got to mix in a nice little mix up. And, you know, Megan Fox was actually in this movie. I had no idea that there was even going to be... A girl added to the Expendables because I don't believe there was any girls there, before. There has been Ronda, oh. Ronda Rousey was in one. Oh, or Ronda a couple. Rousey. Yeah, okay, so okay. Yeah, yeah, she was part of it. But yeah, you know, Megan Fox. She's like a really pretty girl, obviously. But um, and I really don't see Megan as like a like a fighter, you know. So um, yeah, I feel like maybe she overstepped her uh, her her fighter boundaries. It's a little bit of a stretch when, when you know. It, you're starting to see this in guys, all the guys, movies. Guys, listen. Well, there's only so much. There's only so. Over. Listen. We are all very independent, strong women. Yeah. But we are not going to be able to do cartwheels off the wall and then jump on top of nine guys and hit them in the face and then come out without not, not even a scratch on your beautiful face and your hair is blowing in the wind. Yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. I love that. It's a little unrealistic what we're starting to see <laughs> as a trend in some of these movies with the female heroine just being so superior that, you know, a, a blow over breath and you're, you're you're falling over. So well, we all know that Megan Fox took over the entire team because that, you know, yeah. that's what that's what happens. And now. you know what? You haven't seen Megan Fox in a lot of movies lately. Well, she right? was she was shut down after Transformers, I believe. Right? Yeah, you know, Michael Bay said and she was kind of done, and then she yep. got with what's his name, the little tall blonde head dude, try to go get some. Yeah. In. So my rating is going to be roughly around a two point nine. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Halfway there. Halfway. You guys there. almost made it. Expendables four. Two point nine. So listen, <laughs> go out, check it out. Expendables 4, Sylvester Stallone, Jason Strata, Randy Kortcher, uh Megan Fox, 50 Cent, 
Uh, Dolph Lundgren, he, he's been in, I think, every single one, too, as well. Yep. So it's kind of crazy. He just needed a little alcohol at yeah. the end to get <laughs> kicking. You guys will love it. Uh, go check it out, and we'll be back with more tight medical movie reviews just for you coming soon. See you then. What's up, guys? I'm John. I'm Sharice. And we are back with another Cupid's Corner. Yippee! That's right. <laughs> Every single Sunday, you'll see us here on ABC at 11 a.m. And we're giving you guys great tips, tricks, information, and things and experience that maybe we've utilized to give you guys the inside track to take your relationship to a whole new, ultimate next level. Whether that's a boyfriend-girlfriend relationship. Oh, boy. Politics. A fiance, a wife boyfriend, whatever it is, we're here to help you guys. Could be whatever. <laughs> yeah. This is true. This is true. <laughs> so every week we're going to come up with pretty good topics to try to help you guys out. Uh, whether it's something maybe you can do together uh, or something you might need to look at in your relationship to see, hey, listen, what's going on here, right? Everybody out there, so you guys just understand, nobody's perfect. Me and Sharice aren't perfect. You guys aren't perfect. Everybody has flaws. But um, it, it's continuously about getting better, especially for you and your partner, right? And so this week is a pretty good one, I think. Um, this is a pretty good topic. So are you confident and are you confident in a relationship? It's a good question, right? Good one. So, you know, when we talk about confidence, we talk about, you know, being strong, not having insecurities. And I'm not talking about physically being strong, but uh, being strong mentally as far as about yourself, right? Because as we grow up, you know, we are our worst critiquers out there. We look at ourselves in the mirror every single day. We know where every single flaw is on our body, ourselves, uh, maybe what we've done in the past. And this might eat away at your confidence level. Um, you know, some people out there that might have had bad high school or elementary school bullying, right? They're insecure um, about maybe their weight or the way they look, their nose, this, that, whatever, because they were bullied about these things. So it stays with them and their mental conscience about some of these things. And it erodes some confidence down on some people. I mean, you see it all the time. And, you know, you might see the most beautiful girl on the beach, right? And she just has low confidence. And you can kind of tell when you talk to somebody on their confidence level. You can definitely tell. You can feel it. Yeah. You can feel a confident person or an insecure or unconfident person, too, at that. Yeah. And then you read off that vibe and that energy. And then that's how things progress or not. Um, but you know, for that, you know, you want to be strong and then we have a relationship, right? So when we talk about relationships and we talk about being confident in a relationship, what we should be talking about is, um, you being confident and trusting in your partner, right? And confident in your relationship is going somewhere. So, you know, not having insecurities, not feeling guilty. Um, you know, there's all different things mm -hmm. that can make you unconfident and unconfident in your relationship. So. You know, if you're doing these things or you have these different insecurities or problems or things that you're unconfident with, this is when we turn to the big C word, which is communication. And communication is key, right? And everything from relationships, business relationships, friends, family, everything across the board, even you talking to a repairman, yep. communication is key. So Work, you know what's going on, everything. right? So if you're not communicating, you're assuming possibly in these situations and you're thinking about the worst possible situation that's happening. I'm so good at this scenario. <laughs> Actually, I've, I've mastered this actual yeah. scenario he's talking about yeah. right so, you know, you know, what these things do is, especially that, if you start assuming things and you, you start, just create and fathom oh, this, man. I mean, I could have been the best book writer because <laughs> I can fathom the best story ever all the way from the point of when John got in his car oh, and what God. happened between the car and him coming home oh, my God. and the a whole story, how you went to the mall and you must've done this <laughs> and you were here for 10 minutes. Then you said hi to this guy and then you got some little Greek in the food court. <laughs> I know everything. <laughs> so this, this is things, right? Because you know, if you're that partner and you're very insecure about things, right? It is eating you alive. What's going on? What are they doing? Well, where are they at? Who are they talking to? You know, and it shouldn't be like that because these things are going to cause you different stress levels as the person, right? And this is not good for your health right off the bat, right? Stress and high stress is not good. And then you know your relationship. So. You know, the physical, the mental, the emotional connection with your partner, this could be throwing some things off. It's like flickering the lights almost, or the light's going off and the power is gone. And then you're like, oh, power's back on. So, you know, that's inconsistent as far as, you know, what's going on with relationships. So that's the big thing I would say is, is that you want to make sure that if you do have these insecurities, you're talking to your partner and you're talking about these insecurities about what can make it better. 
And you don't want to be unrealistic of what you're asking for either, because that's just going to throw your partner off on a whole different level. Like, um, you can't, like I was watching Nine Day Fiance, me and Sharice watch it. And I'm about this at, up, actually. at this point, like, there, there's, a, there's a couple there, and there's this chick in the Philippines, there's this guy from America, and before they met, they had to be on FaceTime 24 <laughs> 7. The, I mean, literally, literally, the girl had to be on FaceTime with the guy for 24 seven. I'm talking about through dentist visits, um, you know, where he was sleeping, when he was eating, like literally like in control the whole time. And if they weren't on it, or even if he went to the dentist and she was on FaceTime watching everything that's going on, if he talked so, yeah. to the, uh, hygienist. the hygienist <laughs> there, she's flipping out and crying on, on FaceTime. So this is very insecure behavior, right? And then even when they got to in person, uh, they're going in person. This guy goes to the Philippines to, to marry this, this girl, in church. Um, to, to live with this girl, to live in Philippines for this woman. And at that point, she's a big church person, right? She's a big Christian. And at that point, he doesn't like religion or he doesn't have any religion that he's tied to. And obviously, this is a big part of what she's doing. So she wants him to come. So he does. And he's there. He's in church. And he can't, he's got to look down. He's, he's got to look down or he's got to look at her. And she's telling him, do not look at any girls here. And I'm talking about old ladies. Like, you know, people are like, he's just looking around like, hey, listen, what's going on here? Um, and at that point, that's another form of insecurity. Like, you don't want to control your partner to the bit where they feel like I'm a caged animal, right? I, I can't do anything, um, you know, without my partner saying it's okay. Or are they always in fear of your, the partner too as well? Like, um, I can't do this because my partner is going to be pissed. I can't do this because they're going to be mad at me. I can't get, the, you know, so that's not good either. So, I mean, really, literally, literally talking about things with your partner is the best thing. And, and you know what? Sometimes your partner will be receptive. Sometimes they might not be, mm -hmm. you know, there's, Just depends. there's different relationships out there. I mean, the flip side times. of this too, though, is that if you're in a situation like this, right, there's a couple different scenarios you can flip here. If you have a partner and you guys have, let's say you, you did something you weren't supposed to do, right? And you create this whatever it is right of course you're you're gonna make your partner insecure now whether you've made your partner insecure or let's say you've never done anything ever and you've been an angel and they're still insecure it is super important on your behalf to make them feel secure mm -hmm. right so john was really good about this mm -hmm. you know he would always reassure me like that oh you're my only one. Oh, i love you oh you look pretty today oh this and that hey meet me here or wh whatever it was because he's showing me that like i do want to be around you like or i do think you're beautiful or you are the only one to me i don't see anybody else kind of thing and you know it's it's reassuring to the partner and then the partner has to be receptive and they're gonna have to say okay well i'm feeling a little bit more reassured let me not you know freak out about every little thing so you're gonna have to if you are in a situation like this where you you care and love for the individual and you want to make it work because i feel like nobody tries anymore you're just willing to go just swipe on some phone or whatever mm -hmm. it's called mm -hmm. um but you want to try to make it work that's going to be the way to make it work yeah. is to really try on your side to secure and make them feel really good mm -hmm. you know i'm not saying like go out of your way or like you know be down on your knees for them i'm saying to make sure that they know that you love them and that's it like there's nothing else and you have to show that uh, consistency mm -hmm. it can't just be like one day and you're like hey you're really pretty and then the next day you're um at dinner and you're walking and uh, you have girls walking by and every girl you're like this oh i thought you thought i thought you said i was pretty i thought you said i was the prettiest one well why are you looking at all of these girls walk by mm -hmm. is there something you want that i don't have mm -hmm. so <laughs> Yeah, that's a good that's one. That's how it goes down, that's though. It's one. like real life. That's a good one. Yeah, don't let your girl catch you checking out other girls. They're going to be upset. Yeah, for sure. put on your shades and make sure they're really dark. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the, you know there's, there's two other things that could affect a relationship and make you insecure, too, as well. So, one, you might have had a past relationship that went bad. Mm -hmm. right? this, this person that's cheated common. on you all the time. They, they did bad things to you that ruined your credit. I mean, I've heard all kinds of different stories from relationships. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just a cheating thing that really hurt the person. It mm -hmm. was different, different other things. Emotional abuse, physical abuse. I mean, there's different things that could really ruin somebody. Um, and they carry these emotional scars. And these emotional scars cannot be seen. So when you look at somebody and you're like, oh, man, I'm injured. You know, you say, oh, well, he's got a cast on his arm, man. He, he got injured pretty bad. But when we talk about emotional scarring too, like people don't see those, those injuries. They don't see the scarring of kind of what possibly could have happened. And 
it is that person's uh, responsibility to try to get through those things themselves too. Mm -hmm. But sometimes if they're going to get in a relationship, they need that support. And that's where, you know, you go the extra mile if you really want to be with that person to make them feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. And maybe they'll get past some of these different things. And it might take some time, you know, because listen, those, those brick walls go up, man. You know, it's, it's not easy busting through a brick wall. So you got to make sure that you're there. And if you want to be around that, some people can deal with that and some people can't. Like, listen, I don't even want to deal with your old baggage. I'm not dealing with this. I'm going to get with somebody that I don't have to, 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 to do these extra steps with, and it'll be happy just with me. But you know what? It, it, there are people out there, and they accept some of these different things as far as baggage, whether it's emotional scarring, kids. You're accepting the person for what they are. The other thing is the outside influence. Don't let outside influence mm. you. Right? Yeah. And what do I mean by this? I mean your friends, your family. Whoever's out there and they're telling you things about your partner or what you should be doing, what you shouldn't be doing, you know what? And they don't even have a relationship. And that's the thing. Most of these they're people single. that are out there and they're, you should be doing this or he should be treating you like this or she should be treating you like this. They don't even have a, a solid relationship. Yeah. Now, if you talk to somebody and they're like, hey man, you know, I've been married for 20 years. This is my life experience. Those are the people you need to talk yeah. to. And, you know, and not the ones that have the phony relationship. It's just paper at that point. Because I know relationships like that. Been together 20 years. Don't sleep in the same bedroom. They're dating Crazy. other people. But since they have all this property, all this money together. They're going to share a house and live on separate sides. They just don't want, they don't want to give it up to the lawyer. So, that, you know, who cares? You do what you want to do. No, I'm talking about people that are together still 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and it's harder to find those people that have those long-lasting relationships. But those are the people that you should learn from. Think about it. When we go for anything out there, uh, we want to go to a professional, a personal trainer that's professional, has certified certifications, you know, a doctor that's certified, all these different things out there, right? So you want to exactly go to somebody that should know about relationships and those people that have been doing it for that long, they got some tricks. Mm -hmm. They've been through everything you've been and maybe even more. I know we've been through a lot. Oh, we've been through a lot. And we're talking about almost 16 years. So at that point, like, a it's, lot. A, it's a long time. And, you know, like I said, nothing's perfect. We had to work through our little quirks, mm -hmm. issues, problems, insecurities, jealousy, all this stuff. I'm not right? jealous. I've but it, it's brought us to a way better level, too, by being able to get through these things and stay in the course. It's real easy, like Sharice said, to, to exit out of a relationship, whether it's a marriage, a boyfriend, um, just a partner in general, and at that point, move on to the next one. That same day, maybe 20 minutes later, you know, people are swiping. And that's not, that's not healthy, guys, just to, just to move on like that. I, you know, I know the old saying, you know, um, you know, to get, get rid of this one, you have to get underneath another one. You know, it is what it is. Or it, You gotta get with somebody else to get over the person you yeah, just got over. Like, that, that's not, but that's you're not still true. like, and yeah, you know what? People, same day. people might follow that bad advice, right? And then they go and they have intercourse with somebody, and that whole time they're thinking about the other person. Yeah. They don't even care about that. They're just trying to have some emotional feeling, I think, like, or, or try to get back at them some way, shape, or form. They think that that's the way to do it. It's not the way to do it, guys, or girls out there. Mm -hmm. So just remember all these tips and tricks and information. Yeah, we got the good ones. Yeah. Uh, we've got some good information for you guys. And be secure in your relationship. And if you're not secure in your relationship and not secure or confident in yourself, then do that. Work on yourself. It's okay. You know, nobody's perfect, like I said. So if you see these flaws and, and, be honest with yourself about it too, right? Mm -hmm. Really look in the mirror, you know, and, and do what you got to do. But we're here for you guys every Sunday. Me and my beautiful wife, Sharice, because she's so beautiful. And all <laughs> I love you too. Right? Um, well, we're here at Cupid's Corner, 11 a.m. ABC. And if you miss it, don't worry. You can DVR it or you can check it out on all our social media platforms too as well. ABC, 11 a.m. here in beautiful Florida. We'll see you guys soon. See you then.